Shall we see how the inverter does powering the induction hob and the kettle? Oh, no, that's interesting. It's all just shut itself off. We must have tripped something. Oh. Well, the shunt is still alive. And we're still drawing an amp from somewhere. But the inverter's gone off. Interestingly, and perhaps oddly, the inverter is not actually showing any error. That's the error light, and it's not flashing. So I don't know what's going on here. The inverter is stone cold, so it hasn't overheated. The wires are stone cold. There's no problem with them and temperature. No, everything's cool in here. So that is curious. The fact that the lights are still working means that the main fuse has not tripped. You know, I'm just wondering whether in the plug down there that I ran from the inverter just over to my socket there, I just wonder if the fuse in that has gone. The inverter's fine, everything else seems fine. I wonder whether I've got actually just a silly little 3 amp or something fuse in that which might have blown instead of whatever 2000 watts needs. So I'm going to have to check that. You know what, the, the clue is on the plug. What does it say? Fitted with a 3 amp fuse. 3 amps at 230 volts is about ooh, 750 watts. So as soon as I turned on the second burner that will have tripped that fuse. That at least is easy to solve. A couple of whether I've got a spare. What had I better put in there? Something like a 10 amp fuse or something. Right, have I got one? That's the question. In an odd way, I'm quite pleased about that because everything was working absolutely fine, and then the fuse in the plug did what it's supposed to do when I drew too much power. Admittedly, I wasn't expecting it, and I'd forgotten to check that fuse, but it worked and the inverter seemed quite happy, so that's actually all good, I think. Just need to find another fuse now. 2000 watts of maximum inverter power at 230 volts, or call it 220 to be on the safe side, is a shade under 10 amps, so I have retrieved from another appliance in my house a standard British 13 amp fuse, which is the stock mains fuse you'll find, which just gives a little bit of headroom above the 10 amps that might be drawn by the inverter at, inverter at full chat. So I'll swap that in and we'll start up again. I can confirm the old fuse is indeed 3 amps and that will undoubtedly have gone. And here is my 13 amp in the plug to the inverter. And so, in the words of Whitesnake, here I go again on my own. Hooray! Here's the big test. Both of them on. 800 watts each. Actually, I'm surprised it ran for so long. After I turned them both on, the fuse must have gently melted. We are up and running again. One might almost say we are cooking on gas. Except that we most definitely are not. 1500 watts going, 118 amps. Let's wait for this water to boil. Bear in mind that given my culinary limitations, it's extremely unlikely that I'd ever have both burners on at all. It's more likely I'd have the kettle on for a few minutes making a cup of tea, and then one burner on the induction hob just heating up some soup or some beans or something like that. So this is actually quite an extreme test for my kind of cooking in the van. Just out of interest, 70 degrees on that pot, 60 degrees on that pot. I don't want to stick my finger in the water anymore to test it's working. It is at the point where I would rather just fire this thing. Also quite interesting to note the time remaining at the bottom there. If I were to continue like this, 2 hours 11 minutes left. So I am quite pleased that I specified such a massive lithium battery because I was umming and ahhing between this one and the next one down and I said no let's have the bigger battery because I think 
even with my kind of cooking, I'll probably want a lot of power if I want to be able to go and camp anywhere and not plug in for a couple of days. So I'm quite pleased I did. Now that pot is steaming again. There's steam coming off it. May not be picked up by the camcorder, but it is. That one's doing quite nicely. If those were baked beans, they'd be warm by now. So I'm going to see if the inverter is getting hot. Right, let's um, do this one-handed. Oh, do you know what? That's tepid at best would describe that. No, I mean, that's... It was cold to the touch when I first opened it because the van was cold, but that is, that is not even... I mean, tepid is a generous description of that. But for the acid test... 20 Celsius. Well, it's about 13 or so degrees ambient temperature at the moment. Let's do another reading. 20 and one at this end. 20. What about the battery out of interest? 20. Let's see if we can hit that cable. 16 on the actual cable. Let's hit one of the red cables with a marker. 16. All right, so the ambient temperature must be about 16. Batteries at 15. Inverter at 20. What about the top of the inverter? Let's see if I can get a reading on that. 20. It's very definitely 20, isn't it? That's Celsius, by the way, for any overseas viewers. And look, they are both boiling most emphatically. So we have two hobs, an awful lot of steam in here, which I'm going to have to stop in a minute. It's getting very steamy. And an inverter that is 20 degrees Celsius. And that's at the point where I would normally turn it off because the cooking would be ready. At the end of that experiment, we reach the giddy heights of 21. Oh no, look, 22 at that end. There we go. Just double check it, yep. Okay, 22 degrees. I mean, you can just, just detect it with your fingers that that is not stone cold anymore. Well, I'm very pleased with that. Not only it working, but also how cool it's staying. And I did only take the top off um, the area where the inverter is right at the last minute to check its temperature. So I think that is valid and accurate. Obviously on a warmer day, it would get a bit warmer. Uh, but if it was a warmer day, I'd definitely have all the van doors and things open, so that's all fine. I hope that puts any fears to rest of the doubting Thomases who are saying, Ah, oh, your inverter's going to blow up, the van's going to go on fire, everything's going to be doomed! It is clearly plenty happy for the use that I have for it in the manner in which I have installed it. I am quite happy with that. And a quick glance back at the stats. Consumed 22 amp-hours, of which a negligible amount would have been the drawer of the inverter, me turning on the lights, that little alarm that comes on every time you power everything up, basically about 22 amp hours there in that cooking. We've gone back to one day and two hours of battery life remaining, using negligible amounts, and 93%. You will note I'm doing this quite crudely with a double socket adapter because I haven't yet run a cable from the inverter all the way around to the actual worktop with sockets on it. That is my kettle. It's a one kilowatt draw travel kettle with a ridiculously short lead on it. Anyway, this is just a trial. It doesn't matter. And I've put fresh cold water into that just to stop it getting so steamy in here. Let us turn that on to start with. 800 watts there. And let's turn on the kettle. One easy way to find out if it's all on is fire up the monitor, and it clearly is. Look, we're drawing 1900 watts. 23.3 amp hours gone, 152 amps being drawn. And I'll just wait till the kettle boils and we'll see how hot and sticky everything is. I don't know if you can tell over the whir of the fan of the induction hob, but the kettle is now making a boiling water sort of noise, or a warming water sort of noise, and of course when it hits boiling it should switch itself off. 
Here we go. That's my imaginary cup of tea made. Let us read the temperature of the inverter. 25. 25 at that end. 25 in the middle. 25 down there. Oh, a little cooler there. Yeah, it's cooling down. That is absolutely fine. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm exceedingly pleased with that. It proves that the whole setup works. It can power the induction hob, it can power the kettle. It's not going to get too hot for the limited amount of use I will give it. I mean, frankly, if it's only going to get to 25 degrees doing that amount of cooking, um, even if I tried to cook a proper meal on it, I don't think it's going to get too hot. It seemed fine. I will keep an eye on it, obviously. All that remains for me to do is replace the power to the shunt with the new temperature sensor when that turns up tomorrow. And also, I haven't, uh, confession time, I haven't ever had a fuse in the wire from the solar charger to the battery, which I should have had and never, never have. So I'm going to put one of those in as well tomorrow. But that is pretty much it for the rewire of the electrics. Now, about some other little jobs I've got to do around the van. <laughs>